very minimalist in our lifestyle. We don't have a lot of things and stuff. This is actually a bigger bed than we've ever had in any of our homes. One of our main concerns was the kids falling out of bed. We heard about the freedom and the adventure that they got to experience every day. Hey guys, we are Dan and Sam. These are our two kids, Canyon and Ember, and this is our home on wheels. We have a 2021 Thor Ace 33.1. We've been on the road for two months and we love it. Come on inside. Welcome to our home. So right when you walk in, you walk into our living area, our living room. Um, we have our couch and underneath there is great storage, Dan hunts. And so he has tons of um, hunting clothing and items. And so perfect storage is under here. Threw some throw pillows here just to make it a little bit more homey and cozy and comfy. Um, we have one of four TVs in this rig and we <laughs> have turned this on for maybe an hour. We don't really utilize it. We're outside a lot and so we just adventure. Whenever we decided to decorate the RV and think of things to put in, always double storage and things that look good but also have a purpose. So we have all of our throw blankets in here. This is one of two slide outs in our rig. So it is on the dinette on the couch. And we chose this layout because we wanted a big living space with the kids having their bunk area right here. They're um, wanting a big space to play and so the fact that this main bump out or the slide out goes and opens up the floor plan, we really like that because it just has space for them to play. So we are in our dining room or the dinette as I call it. Um, we eat our family meals here. The kids have, do we do homeschool here. They play here. Um, for storage wise underneath the bunk, half the bunk is a drawer. So on this side we have the kids shoes, which is just easy for them to access. Um, the back half is covered. I think it's just a board that's drilled down. We didn't need the extra storage, but if we did need it, we could open it up and stick things back there. And this side is just extra toys for the kids to grab. Um, and then up top here, because they use this area a lot for playing and hanging out, we put all the craft supplies here. If Dan and I are sleeping in or we're outside doing something, they have an area to come hang out and they can reach and access everything on their own. So Canyon has his side. That way we tried it where they were all on one side and they were like <laughs> bothering each other, trying to grab each other's crayons and stuff. So Canyon's is always on this side, his paper, his crayon box, and then Ember's has hers over here with paper, kinetic sand, Play-Doh that she can reach. And in the middle is just some containers with craft supplies. Um, Again, a few homeschool items. That way we can access it. And yeah, we just love hanging out here. We also play board games. We have several that we brought with us on the road and it's nice just to have more seating toast as well. So this table actually drops down and it does convert into a bed. I wanna say this rig says it sleeps eight people. Um, this sleeps like half a person, so it doesn't sleep eight people. We've never dropped it down. We have um, had my mom stay the night, and so she slept on the couch that does fold out, but the dinette we haven't. But if we needed extra space for friends or family to come over, the dinette drops down, the cushions do, and we have extra sleeping area. In the dining room is our second TV. We've actually never turned this TV on. We thought about removing it because it has this little ledge here that I could use as a succulent shelf or put a picture frame in there. We hit the road so quickly that we just haven't touched it. So right now it's there for looks. I don't know what they were thinking when they designed this model. If like they're thinking football game and people could watch from all angles. I'm not sure, but we've just never used it. Welcome to the second half of our living area. So these are our recliners, um, again, with some comfy pillows. The recliners aren't the best. I think we've pulled them out a couple times. You have to use your ab strength to keep your legs up. So it's not like full lazy, but lazy boy status where you can actually like lay back and recline, but it does the job when you're wanting to relax. So we have the two recliners here and then in the middle compartment, this is where we keep all the dog's toys. So we have Scout, he's an English lab, he's three months old. So we keep his bumper, his dog bones, puppy bags. That way, if he goes to the bathroom, the kids can run in here. They can kind of help take care of him, grab a treat for him, grab a doggy bag. So it's nice to have all that in there. Um, and cup holders here fit the size of a Coke can, nothing bigger. So we don't use those too often. Um, storage up above. So this is where I keep the kids homeschool stuff. I used to keep it over there, but they got kind of curious on days we weren't doing schooling and would 
want to play with some of the curriculum in the books. And so I just wanted it out of the way. And now that I moved over here, although they can climb and reach it, they haven't touched it. Okay, so we are up here in the kids' bedroom. One of the big things we looked at when we chose an RV and chose the layout was the two things that are important to us was Dan has a podcast. He'll talk about that later. And then a space for the kids to sleep and keep all their toys. And so an overback over cab bunk area made the most sense to us. One of our main concerns was the kids falling out of bed. Ember has started to sleepwalk in the middle of the night and we didn't want her to like fall over. So Dan thought of adding these boards to it that are just on hinges down here drilled on the back side that we could lift up when they go to bed and then fold down when they're awake. Um, it's worked out perfectly. I didn't know if it would hold, if the strength would hold, but it's good. She's woken up a couple times and it just kind of guides her to go down the ladder rather than over the side. And then in the back here, we have three cubbies on each side for their toys. And we have Legos, stuffed animals, action figures, um, a little area where they can have their space. And then in the back, we have some magnet tiles and more Legos for them to both use. So perfect amount of space for sleeping and keeping their toys. We really decided to live tiny and start traveling last year after Gutted. We came to this event and we met a bunch of people that were living in school buses and vans and small trailers. And we heard about the freedom and the adventure that they got to experience every day. And that was something that we've always wanted in our lives and wanted our kids to grow up with. Yeah. And so it was after that event that we started saying, okay, we might get into this space. We might yeah. try to figure out how we can it, work on the road. It made sense. We started working for ourselves. We already loved traveling. We just traveled in our Camry and stayed in hotels. Um, and we're very minimalist in our lifestyle. We don't have a lot of things and stuff. And so it just kind of made sense that the next stage in our life was to travel full time and was to get a rig and hit the road. Um, so yeah, we, we did, we're now two months on the road and in addition to seeing our friends travel and adventure, we I was on a surrogacy journey and ending that journey, it just seemed like a great transition to go from pregnancy, from delivering a child, you know, handing the baby off to their family, and then to then focus on our family and spend time together, make memories, love on our kids. And so um, it's been a fun couple months. So the transition lifestyle wise was pretty easy going from where we were living to living in a camper and traveling full time. The biggest issue was that it wasn't a, a smooth transfer from one location to another. We didn't want to start renting a place. We had been renting and then we found out that we had to leave there by a certain date. Um, and so we were like, well, we don't want to rent for like three months. It's a lot of money each month for a space that we're not fully moving into. And so. we could have gotten an RV, but I was still pregnant and we wanted to figure like finish out my pregnancy in a home um, and get a few things lined out before we hit the road. So from that point, we moved from our rental into our friend's basement. We lived there, they had two, two kids and they were the same age as ours. And then we moved into her mom's attic. Yeah. And so to finally have our own space is amazing now, but it was definitely a couple extra steps from what we were expecting. Yeah. So right now we're in the kitchen and this is my favorite place because I'm a snacker and all throughout the day I'm coming in and out of here, grabbing food, stuffing my face and yeah, that's why I like this place. So I do love that we've got a giant sink. We've had rigs where we've got like these tiny little sinks that you can wash one bowl at a time, but the sink is a big deal because I hate dirty dishes everywhere um, and so we can knock that out pretty quick. We've got all of our plates and Again, more snacks. I think every cupboard has snacks in it. It's just essential for us. So we've got plates and bowls and cups. We've got all of our food. Again, more snacks in here. And there's so much cabinet space, which we really love. That's one thing all throughout the rig that we realized um, there's, there's enough storage for everything. And we thought we were gonna have an issue with that, like bringing stuff on the road. We've actually cleared out like three more bins. So we have plenty of room if we pick anything up while we're out. So when we're stationary, when we're not moving day to day, the stove is a, a must for us. The microwave is great for when we're on the road. We can kick the generator on super quick. Even if I'm driving, she'll kick it on 
throw something in here, heat it up, bring it up, and uh, we can eat on the road. The oven, we haven't used it a single time in two months. Um, my mother-in-law came and she wanted to do it, and I'm like, I kind of like the idea of not even ever using it because we just don't need it for most things. So a lot of the food that we do, we do cook on the stovetop, and then we'll just heat it up later on. So the stove is propane, and it's just got this little guard back here, which is kind of great because it, it keeps the wall nice without warping and stuff. It doesn't let the heat transfer back there. But it's a three burner stove. It's got some beautiful lights on the front. I don't think we've ever turned those on either. Um, but it's awesome to be able to actually have multiple burners. So this fridge is great. We It runs off of electric or propane. And so we have it on propane anytime we're going down the road. And it keeps all of our stuff super cool. Um, I wish it was a little bit bigger, to be honest, because Right now we can fit like four to five days worth of food, whether it's prepared meals or just ingredients to make food. And I would like to have something that we could take out for a little bit longer so that we're not having to run into the store midweek when we run out of things. So I really like this pantry because it's got these drawers that are low down. We keep a lot of the kids stuff in it, whether it's granola bars or apple juice pouches so that they can easily access it without always having to ask us or to pull out a stool and climb up on the counter. And so they come in all the time. <laughs> we'll close our door. We tell them, grab a granola bar in the morning, don't open our door, just leave us alone, let us sleep in a little bit. And so there's tons of room and this goes all the way back. So, I mean, we can fit like 10 weeks worth of cereal just on this top shelf. So here we've got the bathroom and the bathroom is one space that I would definitely change about this rig. I mean, bathrooms typically in rigs are pretty small, um, but this one seems extra confined com considering how big the rig is. They could have probably added another foot, maybe taken out that TV on the opposing wall, but it still has enough space for um, the things that we need. Up here, we've got a lot of our vitamins, a lot of our medical stuff, sunscreen, bug spray, that type of thing, toiletry bags for if we actually leave the rig somewhere and travel for a short amount of time. And then all of Sam's stuff is up here, whether it's her makeup, her hair products, things like that. And then mine and the kids stuff all hangs out down on these two shelves. So it's nice that it's got this extra little bit of storage over here um, so that we can keep all of our stuff divided up and organized. Over here, we've got our shower. Now the shower is actually pretty good size. I, I've, I've been in rigs like uh, travel trailers where I'm ducking and I can barely wash my hair. This one actually, I don't feel uncomfortable in at all. This door was super cheap and it's already broken though. So I've got to still figure that out. But this is our extra storage for when we're on the road. We just throw anything big that's loose right in here and then we don't worry about it. We've got 80 gallons of freshwater storage on this. I think it could be a little bit better, but it seems to get us through like a full week or two. And then I carry around two extra like six gallon freshwater jugs. And so then I can add another 12 gallons to our tank if we do end up getting low or running out. So the toilet goes straight to a black water tank. Uh, it's a standard camper toilet. It's not like composting or anything like that. So it drops through. And honestly, the smell hasn't been that bad. We'll just drop a a bio pack down before um, we use it and the smell is mild. I We probably dump that tank every other week maybe. It doesn't fill up very fast and again when we're at a campground we'll just use the bathroom outside. I like peeing outside so does Canyon so we do that and it <laughs> saves our tank a little bit. When we look at a timeline of how long we're going to be on the road for, we honestly don't have a set time frame. Our whole goal is to buy land and build because in Springfield, Missouri, that's our home base. That's where our families are. My family's at. That's where our friends are. And so we do want to build a home, build a host, you know, have property for hunting or the kids to play. So we're going to look at property this coming spring and start the process. But with that, we don't know how long we're going to be on the road. Maybe a year, maybe a year and a half until who knows? Maybe two, maybe three. We know it's not, or at least being a part, being in it two months now, I know this isn't our forever and some people do it and they don't have an end goal in mind. We have an end goal, we just don't know, or like an end time frame, we just don't know when that is. Because I do love the lifestyle, but we also love community and I don't know, being with like our friends and family, we do miss. I think the biggest challenge in the last two months of being on the road has probably been balancing our schedule um, with travel where we go is dependent on Dan's hunting seasons and his events. 
we both do content creation, but with podcasting and hunting, he has to be um, for his hunting season in a certain state and there for a certain time frame. And so we kind of let that lead. And then wherever we are, we just do content creation from there. Um, but balancing that schedule with homeschooling, with you know our work and then just personal time, I think has been hard because we chose to knock out like 16 states in a month, which we were driving way too much. Dan was driving way too much. You didn't drive. I did not drive. Um, and so I think that's that was hard. We just took on way too much and we weren't in one place for longer than sometimes one night, sometimes two or three, but we really want to learn how to slow down the travel, stay in a place for at least a week, maybe two weeks at a time to where we can get situated, You know, check out some of the local places, enjoy time, have designated time for work, school time, um, and not be on the road so much and like go, 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 because it was a lot. Yeah, just building a little bit more structure when we're in a place yeah. so that we can get the things done that we need to, that we can see the places that we want to see and not just be hopping from campsite to campsite every day. Yeah. So now we're in the master bedroom. This is where Sam and I sleep. This is where the dog sleeps down on the floor. And I love the bed in this thing. This is actually a bigger bed than we've ever had in any of our homes. It's a camper king, I think is what they call it. But there's a ton of space. Sam, I think would prefer like a twin because she gets really cold and likes to be close. And I'll be all the way on that side and she's over here. Um, but I love the bed. The whole bed slides in. And one thing about this rig specifically, the top of the bed slides in, but it's not the whole base. I've had campers like that where the base slides in and you have to take things off the floor. But honestly, we can keep the rug down. We can keep anything in front of the bed when we go to transport it. And the whole top just slides right over the top without having to move everything out of the way. Uh, up above, we've got a lot of storage. So we've got board games up here. We've got camera equipment. We've got a couple um, more board games and miscellaneous bins there on both sides we've got extra storage for our little things and then we got these awesome charging stations so we can put our airpods our phones and our apple watch all in one without having to deal with all the cords we have found these cord mitigation in these especially when you have cameras and podcast equipment and computers that becomes an issue and so we like to be able to have everything all in one spot without having cords running all around so here the closet's actually really big and this is one of my favorite features all throughout the rig. I've got all of my clothes. I've got my basketball stuff, shoes, um, laundry basket, all of Sam's stuff, the kids clothes that they hang up, our shoe basket. And then down here, we've got more room for our pants and underwear and socks and things like that. I've got mine, she's got hers. And then we've got the kids down below. And so there's so much storage in here, but this is my baby right here. This is my little mini podcast studio. I've got my board. I just downgraded because it is a small space and my other equipment was pretty big, but I've got a small board, a headset microphone combo, and then my computer. And so while we're on the road doing podcasts, we knew it was going to be one of the big challenges, but with this setup, with this little space, I'm able to do my podcasts, edit them pretty quickly. And I don't have stuff that I have to take in and put out all the time. Right now we're on the outside of the rig. So here's our little entertainment system. Again, TV number four. I don't really use the TV a whole lot, but when I come out here to work out, I use this sound bar quite a bit. I'll just Bluetooth to it and play some tunes while I'm working out. The under storage out here, again, there's so much of it. Some of it's passed through, some of it's not. The one thing, I have to complain about on all of it is these latches. They're pretty flimsy. Um, if you've seen like school buses or Greyhounds or like higher end RVs, they've got those big handles that are super easy to open up and close. And a lot of them have hydraulic lift doors. These are not, we've already busted off one key in it. And so now I use the screwdriver to get in. So uh, just little things here and there that could always be upgraded. So I do a lot of outdoor activities, hunting, fishing, hiking, things like that. And so we keep everything in the under storage for that. I've got big, big totes that I put under here. I keep all my workout equipment in this. I've got power tools because I like to do projects. I like to help people uh, if somebody needs a hand repairing something. And so I've got my big DeWalt box that I keep saws and oscillating tools and drills and impact drivers, things like that. And then all of the kids stuff, we carry around their dirt bikes. We've got scooters, 
um, they just like to go fast. And so to have room for all of that is, is definitely handy. We both do content creation for a living. And then I've got two podcasts in addition to that, which offers or allows us to live this lifestyle that we want. Yeah. Before this, I was working dead end jobs, construction jobs, very low paying stuff, and we just couldn't afford to get ahead in life. And social media offered an opportunity mm -hmm. to where we could just share who we are, what we do, what we're passionate about, mm -hmm. and what our lives look like. And it allows us to be out here traveling and meeting new people, going to events like this. Yeah, definitely. Just encouraging and inspiring people. We both never thought we would do social media, um, you know, content creation, but it's fun. It's something that we enjoy, and we've realized that we are good at, and we've learned you know, the analytics and insights of it and, you know, connecting with our followers and just being real and authentic, building those relationships um, was something that we found we came to enjoy. And so starting to monetize it. Yeah, it's been a blessing just to work for ourselves, have the freedom to travel, grow our businesses however we want, when we want and yeah, live this lifestyle together. So our main account together is We Are Dan and Sam. We're on every platform. You can hit us up there and Dan's Two Podcasts. Yeah, my podcast and my social platforms associated with the podcast are The Nomadic Outdoorsman and The Western Rookie. So that's it for our tiny home tour. You guys can head out, but remember to always choose adventure. Mm -hmm.